Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to break down the Spiegler stainless steel brake line. Look at that. Install on our 2022 Yamaha R7 STG project bike. Okay, let's start off with why do you want to replace the rubber brake lines with these stainless steel lines? This is one of the biggest performance upgrades you can make to your sport bike. It's going to completely change the braking system without changing a master or rotors or even the brake pads. The rubber brake hoses that come on the bike from the factory, they expand. The hotter it gets, the more they expand and you lose power and feel in the brakes. The stainless steel lines do not expand more feel, more fun, more stopping power. This is an ABS equipped model. This install is a technical job. I'm gonna be honest with you. All of the bodywork, including the fuel tank, has to come off this motorcycle. You're replacing lines that run from the calipers to the ABS unit, front and rear, and then from the master cylinder to the ABS unit, which is located right here. It's a lot. We're going to show you step by step exactly what it takes to get this done for the bodywork removal and reinstallation. We have a completely separate video on that. If you need help with that, reference that. It's going to get you through that process. We couldn't include that in this video because if we would have, it would be like over two hours long. It'd be a really long video. The only thing we don't have footage of is removing and reinstalling the fuel tank. It's under this cover. It's a very basic process. At one point in the video, I promise you, I'm gonna show it to you, and then this thing was running so long, I decided, not gonna happen. If you can't figure out how to do the gas tank, you probably shouldn't be tackling the brake lines. Spiegler brake lines are the ones that we run on all of our race bikes. We put them on all of their project bikes. They're made right here in Ohio, one day service typically for us. They're available in a plethora of colors. I typically go with the blue and yellow. This year on Max Vans Ninja 400 and Joe Lamander Juniors too, you're going to see their Moto America bikes with green lines and green fittings. It's going to look pretty badass, right? So we have all these color options for you. Great quality, made right here in the U.S. These ABS lines require a lot more to build the line kit. There's a lot of grommets and protective coatings that are put over the lines. When you get them in your hands, you're going to understand this is a whole different thing. These kits are a little more expensive than what you typically find with your more basic non-ABS kits. This kit comes with a full, it's an excellent set of instructions. They put a lot of time into this, a tremendous amount of time into this. Uh, we kind of reference these during the video. I have the benefit of having done this stuff on countless models at this point. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install. I'm gonna show you how to bleed the brakes. Be patient when bleeding the brakes. There's no voodoo secret to bleeding ABS brakes, but it requires more patience because of the length of the lines. For example, the rear, the unit is up here. The master is back here, so you're running from there to there, and then from there to here. That's a lot of piping to get fluid fl flowing for the first time from this rear master cylinder. So if you don't have a power bleeder, you know it's gonna take a hot minute. You can use a gravity bleed. Just be patient. We're gonna break all that down for you as we get deeper into this video. Tools used. I have, I think, pretty much everything right here that I used. I've got a four mil T-handle. I've got a six mil T-handle, five mil T-handle. You need a 10 millimeter socket. I've got it on a T-handle. You need an eight millimeter socket. Eight mil wrench. 10 mil wrench, 12 mil wrench, as well as a 14 millimeter wrench. Uh, to get the fuel tank off, I needed a 12 millimeter socket. I used this configuration. You could use probably several different types with a ratchet, pair of side cutters, Phillips screwdriver, handy little pocket flat blade, and a little uh, pick just to remove some of the plastic clips. Now we're gonna dive into the Epic install. Okay, as you can plainly see, the bike is completely disassembled. We have all the bodywork off the bike. 
I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video because this one's going to be long enough just to cover the brake line install. We have a full featured video where I show how to remove and reinstall every single piece that's off the bike now with the exception of the fuel tank. As I complete this project, I will show you how to reinstall the fuel tank. And once you see that, if you're having questions about removal, that's going to answer all that and you'll be able to get that done. No problemo. These ABS bikes really complicate replacing the brake lines. Still, replacing the rubber brake lines with stainless steel braided lines is one of the best performance mods you can make to your bike. This is going to make braking power, lever feel, and modulating the brakes, where right? you have so much more feel and the lines don't expand. It makes a huge difference. And at the end of the day, it's not a very expensive mod. With the ABS bikes, it, it is a time-consuming mod, especially if this isn't something you do every day. I take these bikes apart and put them back together all the time. So for me to do this project, especially off camera, is not that big of a deal. If this isn't what you're doing constantly, take your time, follow this step-by-step, step, and odds are you'll be able to get yourself a good end result. If you see anything here, you're like, dude, I don't know, I feel like this is beyond my skill set. I encourage you, if you still want to do this, take the bike into a dealer and let them do it. These are your brakes and there is zero margin for error on this. Everything has to be done correctly. This is a multi-line kit. We have three lines for the front. Yes, I went with yellow and blue again. This is gonna look amazing on this bike when it's done. You'll notice Spiegler has put stickers on each fitting to denote where it is ultimately going to land very helpful. The two lines for the rear are going to replace everything from the brake pressure modulator valve and pump assembly to the rear master and to the rear caliper. So ultimately what's going to end up happening is these metal pipes that were installed from the factory from here to here are going to be removed from the bike. In this video, there's probably gonna be a lot of cuts. I'm doing this on this bike for the first time, and my expectations are this is going to be a little bit of an adventure, right? You should expect the same thing. What's the very first thing that we're going to do? I have a power bleeder, air assist unit that I have here to bleed the brakes. I use this sometimes. I'm going to use it today to completely evacuate the brake system as close to complete as you can possibly get. This tool is a real nice resource to help you get just that done. That was loud. So we're going to show you some of this on camera. You may or may not have a tool like this at your disposal. There are, of course, other ways that you can empty the braking system, or at least get it as close to empty as humanly possible. It's very important to have some cleaner handy and some rags. You're going to get brake fluid on different surfaces. You have to remember that stuff is really hard on paint and some plastics, so make sure as soon as you get it on there, like I like Formula 409 for whatever reason, spray that on everything, right? I use that to clean this up and it works really good. I'm going to go ahead and take the cap off our rear reservoir now too. bleeder back here on the rear caliper is 10 mil. Okay, we've got the rear nice and dry. Go ahead and get started here on the front.
Okay, so the system is drained. We're ready to start removing the front brake lines. Like I said earlier, have some cleaner ready, have rags ready to catch any stray brake fluid. The stuff is really nasty. There's a lot of clips that are holding the front wheel speed sensor wiring harness onto the brake lines. It routes down, loops over here, loops over the fender, and the wheel speed sensor is on the right side of the motorcycle. We're going to go ahead and start disassembling all that now. And you can see here too, these clips also retain the brake lines. To spread this larger one apart, you have to pull one of the tabs on the top out. There's another tab on the bottom. You have to also pull that out while applying a little outward pressure. When you see that clip, take a close look at it. From there, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a clip here that holds the two lines together. These smaller clips. The easiest way I found to take these apart is to push down on this tab here and kind of slide it apart like so. And kind of keep track of where everything was. You'll note that on the wheel speed sensor harness, you see these white, uh, it's, I think it's actually a piece of tape or something wrapped around it. That marks where that needs to go. So just kind of keep that in mind. You'll also see these clips, right? They're two different sizes. So be aware of that as well. Like so. Got one that goes over the fender here. side to catch this one. Can't get that. Now. So I'll go ahead and grab the banjo bolt. The banjo bolt on the left caliper is a double banjo. You're going to see that the over the fender line is underneath and it mounts in the forward most mount. That one folds over the fender. This bolt will not be reused nor will the crush washers. We will be reusing the OEM banjo bolts at the ABS module. If you want to come on over here on the other side. That one popped off. And we have another retainer here for the speed sensor. Brake line retainer here. All right, we're down to the banjo bolt. Single banjo over here. loose completely. There is a retainer for the brake line and the wheel speed sensor harness right here. It's an eight millimeter hex head. I need to remove that. This bracket will be reused.
some of this stuff is literally like watching paint dry. <laughs> Apple is excessively long. All right, out that comes. I'll give you a look at this here once I slide it off. There's a little tab right down here that slides into the bracket. And then there's the hole the bolt goes through. Of course, holds the wheel speed sensor as well. Now that we have that done, we can lower the bike down and disassemble up at the master and the ABS valve. All right, up here at the ABS valve, these are the two lines here at the front that are going to go to the uh, master and then to the front calipers. These banjo bolts will be reused, but the crush washers will be replaced when we install the new lines. Depending on what you're using to evacuate your brake fluid, you may need to be a little more careful than we have been. You can see I'm really not losing any fluid here at all because I had that vacuum assist situation to uh, evacuate it. You've got a six mil internal hex banjo here at the brake master. side. This banjo will be replaced. Make sure you get that crush washer is in between the master and the line. There's a mounting point down here for the line. I release that. There's a little bracket here. It has another eight mil hex fastener that is located literally right here. I've got my finger wrapped around the four tube. It's gonna be really hard to show you guys on camera, but it'll be pretty self-explanatory. If you wanna kind of come in here it is right down there. I'm going to turn that light on. You can see that right down there. But we're not going to be able to really show you the removal because it's just too tight to have my hands and the camera down there at the same time. There is another retainer for the wheel speed sensor harness up here. This is reusable. Kind of like a rubber tie. Make sure you save that. I can't say it enough since the implementation of the ABS, <clears throat> it has dramatically changed brake line installation. Probably be nice if the OEMs would just put a uh, stainless steel on from the factory. Some of them are, but most of them are not. All right, that fasteners out. This bracket's very similar to the other one that I gave you a look at earlier. You got to kind of rotate it out so you can get that tab out of the bracket it slides into, like so. We'll give you a look at this. And now the lines are loose. When we come back, we're going to have these completely off the bike and we'll begin the installation process of the Spiegler line kit. These lines come with stickers that are on the fittings that denote where the fitting itself goes. 
you know, we've been mocking this up to have good flow in this video, so all those stickers have been removed at this point, okay? This front line could have actually had up on the bike and mocked up so that, you know, I could understand what it's gonna take to get it done and then be able to walk you all through this process. So what we already know is we know this line is gonna route up here in the front and it goes through this mount here, so it's gonna kind of slide that into position. And bring it down like so. The Spiegeler lines offer the ability to rotate the fitting on the line. We have some B-roll of that that we shot yesterday, and I think Lucas should be able to go ahead and get that included in this video for you. You'll find that pretty helpful. This is the double banjo bolt for what will be the two lines that go here. I am going to just thread this in right now to do nothing more than just hold the over the fender line in position, like so, so I can get this all mocked up. Get that clip in place, we'll go over to the other side. Now, rotation of the fitting. You know, what you want, you can see how this right now, like when I bend it over, it's just nice and flush, right? It sits flat on that. There's really no need to rotate it. If you do need to rotate it, you're going to use the supplied tool kit. These are the blocks that are going to go over the ferrule here. This is the tool you'd use to adjust it. And then you can hold them with this. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and turn this one just a little bit. That way we don't have to use the B-roll. You want to have these at the bottom of the ferrule. And you'll feel that they kind of in that position it wants to grab on one of the ridges. The best way to do this is in a vise because you need to hold these firmly. That's a pain in the shorts because you're forever taking the line off. Since it's a little flusher now, this one is going to get a single banjo. So you want to go banjo crush washer through the line, add the second crush. I'm not going to tighten this down yet. That into position. And there's our retainer clip. Go ahead and lock that into place. Right here. This grommet will be used to secure the wheel speed sensor harness. I'm not going to do that yet, and I'll explain why as we get a little bit further. Come over here. This grommet will be used to secure the over the fender. Go ahead and lock that one down. Now we're ready to install the line that comes from the ABS unit over to the left front caliper. And this line goes over top of the line that crosses over the fender. So we've got double banjo crush washer through the fitting. You need to have another crush washer in between the two fittings. Slide this through that fitting, followed by one more crush washer. Rotate this line up into position. Like so. And that's going to be its resting place. So we'll go ahead and just finger tight now. And slide the 
this all in. And this is going to go up through this trim here. We're going to route this up towards the ABS unit. As you would expect, this is a little, you know, this doesn't move quite as easily as the uh, rubber factory lines did, but uh, it's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and slide that up into position up there. We're going to lower the bike down and start the banjo bolt at the top. Okay, this line is for the front caliper and per the diagram here, this port is for the caliper. This port is for the master. It's very important you have those routed correctly. So you've got the OEM banjo crush washer along with another crush washer that'll go between the ABS unit and the uh, fitting. Get that started. Like so. And now we'll raise the bike back up and work on the routing for the ABS sensor. Okay, so we have one of our brackets here. We're going to go ahead and slide our wheel speed sensor harness in first. And then we slide the brake line grommet in. See if we can't find that groove. There it is. Push that bracket up into position. Let's find that awkwardly long fastener. and run that down. And when we come back, we will put on the rest of the clips that secure the wheel speed sensor harness. Okay, we're gonna start over here on the right side where that white stripe is on the wheel speed sensor harness. Let's go ahead and get that over. And then compress this clip. That grommet seems maybe just to be a tad bit thicker than what the OEM line was. I'll just grab a pair of uh, needle nose pliers to help us there. Slide that up like so, work our way over. You've got two different sides here. Make sure you use one of the larger ones over here. Slide that grommet up just a little bit. You can move those on the Spiegler brake line, no problem. Gonna need to use the pliers on each one of these to get it to re engage, like so, and rotate it back. Right here, the larger end of the two line retainer is going to go over that grommet, smaller end will go over the smaller of the two grommets. Slide that up. Let's make sure we've got this grommet in the right spot. we we'll use one of the two smaller ones here. Able to clip those about the eight of the pliers. And then we got one more here. Okay. 
Okay, that one's gauge, and that looks super, right? It's nice and clean. Everything looks great. You know, one thing I see here that I probably will end up doing, do it right now, because I took the reflector off, right? You're going to take the reflector off. Nobody's riding around with that reflector on their bike. That reflector ultimately would help to protect that wheel speed sensor line if you had a little tip over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the line on the back side of the bracket like so, and that's just going to kind of keep it out of harm's way. Assuming the stuff on your bike is going to be routed the same way. Now we're left with one more clip. It's the larger of the two. We're going to use it on this grommet right here where it goes over the fender. So I need to kind of slide that grommet all the way over to one side to allow for this one to come in next to it. Realistically, you could probably run without this. I feel like that lines, that sensor harness there is pretty darn secure where, where it's at without one. That's up to you. Just trying to create some space here on that grommet. See if I can get this in there. I'm flip flopping. I'm going without it. I think we've got enough there, you know, and just the way the clip and everything is. What I could do, if you really want to run this, I think I'd have to turn that one clip around. So we can so take that off, turn that clip around. Just allow me to slide that over all the way to one end, like so. Let's see if we have enough. Looks like now we've probably created enough space. Yeah, I don't know that this is really necessary when I look at that. I'm sure that they really like it. Maybe if you rotated it up a little bit. I'm gonna call that one optional. I'm going to say you, you do what you think is right. I'm looking at that right now. For me, that looks really good. Now, we will tighten up the banjos down here. These are aluminum, okay? You don't want to go crazy on these. Right there. Go over to the other side. This comes with a really nice set of instructions. I don't remember if there's a torque spec in there for these banjos or not. This isn't something I would normally use a torque wrench on. If you prefer to, by all means, do so. All right, that one is good. When we come back, we're gonna lower the bike down and we're gonna begin to install the line at the master. All right, now we're gonna install the line that goes from the master cylinder to the ABS unit itself. Okay. Thread that up into position here. This one we reuse one of the OEM banjos, of course, replacing the crush washers with those that were supplied from Spiegler. Banjo crush fitting, followed by another crush washer. We 
when you do an install video like this and you have a cameraman all over you, it feels like you're being stalked, right? It's like you have a stalker. Sorry, Lucas, but that's what it feels like, man. That is not tight. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to check and see the position of the fitting at the master, see if it needs to be rotated. And I would say all in all, I feel pretty good about that. I don't think I need to turn the fitting. You know, some of the kits, you get them from Spiegler, you don't need to do anything. Other kits, you'll find as you go through the installation process, the fittings definitely need to be rotated. We're going to go new banjo, crush washer, fitting, crush washer. Go ahead and get this up into position here. It helps to, when you're trying to install the, the banjo, if you kind of have one hand on the line so you can manipulate it a little bit because the stainless steel lines, you know, they're, they're certainly not as uh, flexible. And you know what I want to do? I'm going to change the routing here just a little bit. I'm going to route the wiring harness on the outside of the brake line. You know, because for a lot of riders, you'll probably end up changing the position of these levers a little bit and rotating the master cylinder down and just having that harness on the back side of the brake line. I think it's going to get you a little more clearance. So we're going to think forward a little bit. Just drop my crush washer. Damn it. Don't worry, we'll typically give you extra. Get that new crush on there. Banjo bolts are on, they're not tight. We were interrupted by a very rude 16 year old motorcycle racer who needed photos taken with his helmet. And he had to argue with me about where to take the photos. Okay, remember this bracket? This bracket is going to loop over the two grommets that Spiegler has over these lines. You got to, this is going to be impossible for us to show. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Lucas, my stalker, will do his best. but this is just a really low access area. Make sure the flat side of that grommet is against the flat side of the bracket. Captures those quite nicely. You know, it's funny, back in the olden days, these brake line kits, they would, it, you'd, ha you'd hang them on their zip ties, man. And now we have all this ABS and we have grommets everywhere. Professional. Okay, we can go ahead and snug that up. That's another one. I don't know why I didn't use a, a bolt of similar length um, the, over the fender bracket, but whatever. Who am I to judge? So go ahead and get that tightened up. We've got that bracket snugged up. There is a, another bracket here. This grommet is going to hold the... Uh, line to the master. Make sure you got that in there.
pressure on that. That looks, I like that. I like the routing, everything looks good. Give this a little tug before we tighten it up and just kind of get the lines evened up like so. This, this fits, they did a nice job up front here. Okay, now remember we have this rubber reusable tie to secure our uh, ABS wheel speed sensor harness up here at the top. So we're pretty much done with the front. We just got to tighten up a couple of banjos. All right, so, you know, and that goes on the same, like we showed you earlier, there's the white stripes that are on the wheel speed sensor harness. Just goes there. So then we'll come over and snug up the uh, torque down brake lines here. Let's give them a couple of passes. All right, grab our 14 millimeter wrench and we're gonna tighten up our banjo bolt here. So, and minus the bleeding, that is it for the front. That is complete, and I think we got ourselves a good end result. Okay, let's go ahead and bleed off the front brakes. Remember, the circuit is completely isolated from the rear brakes. Start off by filling our reservoir. So there's a few ways to do this. You know, you could start off with a nice gravity bleed and just see if we can get some, because you need to get the fluid moving. That's really gonna be the key to this whole process. The furthest point away is going to be the right front caliper when you have the over the fender, oops, line kit like this. So this is a tool I highly recommend speed bleeder bag and hose kit. It just makes bleeding the brakes so much cleaner than spraying fluid, trying to do it into a like a Gatorade bottle or something. We use these at the track, bleed the brakes quite a bit. On the bike, so make sure your screws open. Now you could sit here and allow gravity to do its work, right? You could just let it sit while you're working on the rear brakes. That would be one approach. It requires a little more patience. Most of us don't have a lot of patience. So an another way to go here would be to try to get the fluid moving manually. Notice I just compressed and held the front brake lever. I'm gonna close the bleeder screw. like so, release, open, squeeze, hold, and we're just gonna repeat that while keeping an eye on the level in our reservoir. This bike has a bleeder screw on the master, both front calipers, so getting a nice lever on this is not gonna be a problem. need to remember you're moving this fluid a long way. We're talking from the master to the ABS unit and then 
from the ABS unit to the left front caliper and then crossing over to the right front caliper. So, you know, you're not just going to pump this five times and see fluid. That's not going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the camera now and I'm going to continue to do this. And when we come back, hopefully we have some fluid moving and we're on our way to getting these brakes bled. Okay, I let it gravity for a minute. And now we're gonna come up to the master, take advantage of having the bleeder screw. We're getting immediate flow up here, which is nice. You can see the reservoir levels going down. So we're moving in the right direction now. Okay, so we can stop up here. We'll top off our level, and then we'll go ahead and go back down to the calipers, and we should have movement here right quick. You know, I know a lot of people think with an ABS bike that there's like this voodoo that goes into bleeding the brakes. And while I'm sure there is an exception to the rule, uh, bleeding the brakes on an ABS bike are it's really the same as a non-ABS unit. Takes a little longer because you have more lines if you service the system. But overall, the procedure is going to look super similar. You gotta make sure you keep an eye on your fluid level. It's dropping now with every, look at that. Okay, we're gonna go over to the other side now and hit that one. As you can see, this is uh, not that bad. It's going pretty smooth. I'm gonna top off a fluid level real quick. Make sure we don't run out. You run out during this process, you're starting over from square one. Nobody wants to do that. This one's nice and clear already. Because realistically, you know, the fluid is moving through the left front caliper over to the right. So, you know, I didn't really expect to see any air over here or much at all. Go back over to our left caliper. Oh, I'm sorry, the right one. Right, left, left, right. Today's St. Patty's Day. I'm thinking about tall boys. running nice and clean. The lever feels pretty good. We'll hit that once more. And 
then we're going to come up to our master. Let's hit that again, just because. That feels really good right now. All right. Tighten those up. And when we come back, I'm going to have the fluid full, and I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to use to make sure you get the best possible result when bleeding your brakes. It's all topped off, capped off. I'm going to go ahead and just pump it up. I'm going to hold it. And then I've got a couple of cable ties here and have one that was long enough to do it in one shot so we got two just hold the lever depressed it's going to do two things for us one it's going to allow gravity to do its job if there's any air bubbles in there while we're jiggling the bike around and stuff doing the rear they're just going to work their way up the top magically two it's going to leak check our front brake system. If there is any loose fittings or you had some debris in between a crush washer and one of the, uh, the calipers, right, or the ABS unit of the master, and there's a leak, you're gonna know right away because you're gonna have fluid running down when we come back to double check it. When I come back, we're gonna be working on the rear. Okay, let's go ahead and dive on into the rear now. I'm gonna start off by removing this plate from the left side, I'm sorry, the right side. Man, I'm all confused today. The right side of the frame. These are six mil internal hex. This is gonna get us uh, much better access to the rear brake lines. A lot of it runs right behind this plate. Okay, once we have that off, got a pretty clear sight line here, what's happening behind it. Got some cable ties that are going to be in the way. Cut that one. I'm going to cut this one right here. We have some clips that are going to be holding the brake line to the ABS rear wheel speed sensor harness. My expectation is these get reused. Put these over to the side. Like so. This bracket up here is going to need to come off. It's a four mil. Let's see if I can get handle up in there maybe to get that rolling it looks like this bracket also gets reused Fastener. Spread the bracket apart, like so. Put this all to the side. Okay, and from here, right, you can see the brake pipes run up to here, and there's two more short hoses there. I've got a little retainer here. This is going to be reused. Pop that apart. There's a retainer here. Those just slide in like so. I think we'd probably be well served to separate the pipes 
from the uh, brake line junction right here that goes all the way back. It's 10 millimeter. But I want to be ready with a rag and cleaner just in case. Almost nothing. I'm not going to be really very kind to these lines because they're gone. They're hitting the trash. That line wrench just makes it a little easier to break that fitting loose. It's not a necessity. Odds are you'd get it done with a standard wrench as well. The line wrench just helps you prevent from rounding off the nut. St. Patty's Day celebrating. Get done with this. Nice out today, so I drove the Black Dragon into work. Took a little cruise. My 70 degree day in March here in Michigan. Okay. That one's out too. Let's go ahead and just make sure we kind of dab that one off as well. Let's come up here. loose Throw them out of that block okay in theory if there's any fluid in there it should want to run downhill makes sense to me all right and now let's go ahead and see if we can't wiggle these bad boys out of here Cut them if you want. There's a little juice. Or just uh, bend them to your will. say you do what you feel is most appropriate here Got a lot of ways to get this done when we come back these brake pipes are going to be removed and we're going to get the brake lines that still remain on the bike removed okay now we'll go ahead and remove the lines from the back here Got your mounting bracket that junction. There's definitely some fluid in that bad boy. Just get a rag over in that area for now. Looks like we have a retainer here as well. So if we can move 
that up enough to get access to it. Okay, pop that clip off there. And get this one to come off too. Pop that out. like we're going to need to remove this right here. that comes and we should be able to get in here and manipulate that so we can get under here and release this clip sorry I'm probably not really catching enough of this with the camera but so, so much of this will just really be self-explanatory when it's right in front of your face like it is mine right now okay and all that stuff disconnected. I've got a rag there in place just to try and catch any stray fluid. Need a 12 mil wrench. Banjo bolt here at the rear master. This banjo will not be reused. Discard this one. Okay, now we'll go back to the rear caliper. Okay. Can remove this from the bike. I'm going to go in the other direction here. Okay. There we go. Got a little fluid to clean up. I'm going to go throw this stuff out. We'll be right back. Now we just need to remove these two. Hoses from the ABS unit. This is a four mil internal hex. This bracket is not going to be reused. Pull that out. These banjo bolts up here will be reused. So you're going to want to put those to the side. washers and we can go ahead and discard this as well so we have everything removed we're ready to reinstall you know and I went through this and I kind of mocked it up so I look like I know what I'm doing when I put these things on there and I got to tell you the rear is pretty much as challenging as the front when we really get down to it we have two different lines here one goes from the ABS valve to the master the second goes from the ABS valve to the rear caliper. 
we're going to start with the one that goes from the valve to the caliper. You begin by routing the line through this spot here in the frame. And it's going to come, got to get that grommet to pass through. down and over like so. It's going to need to bolt up to the master cylinder like that. What I'm trying to do here is basically determine how that fitting is going to sit. So it's going to be just like that. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a banjo bolt and two new crush washers. The master cylinder line goes up here at the front. Kind of grab the line back here and you can give it a little twist as needed. So there's not as much pressure on that banjo. I'm going to grab the T-handle here to help out. We're not going to tighten it all the way, but I am going to right about there. Okay, now you'll also note that I have all the connectors that are down here for the various switches and the wheel speed sensor and such that run through this area. I took everything apart. We had to modify a bracket. I'm going to show you that in a second. So now that we have this bolted up, let's just kind of quickly see how this looks in terms of do we need to rotate the fitting that's going to sit in there real nice so i think we're in good shape there as you route this this line in this holder here this line for the master is going to be in the rearward most position the one for the caliper is going to be in the forward most position and as we come down through here and route all this Ultimately, what's going to end up happening is the one for the caliper is going to be closer to the frame, and that'll make more sense as we go through this. And I show you. Let's go ahead and grab a colored banjo bolt, two crush washers. So you go bolt, crush, fitting, another crush, and then and go ahead and thread this in the master. I'm not going to tighten it up, but I'm going to run it down. Now we're ready for that rear caliper. Let's grab the line. Let's go ahead and feed it down through. As you bring it down and through, we're going to go ahead and make sure it's on the inside of the line for the master. Got some grommets that are going to be kind of in the way here as we try to get that down, pass down through there. And the fitting for the rear caliper needs to sit in a certain position. So we need to make sure that when we bolt up to the ABS unit, that we have it the line installed correctly, thread through there correctly so that we're able to get fitting in position on that rear caliper. Gotta pass through this guide there. Okay, so a little bit more. That needs to sit like that. That is going to then determine the position here for this line. Like 
like so. Okay, let's go ahead and grab one of the OEM banjos, two new crush washers. are not tight. Use that guide right there. You can go ahead and secure that. So those are going to route just like that. And now we can come through and build out the rest. This line needs to go inboard of this bracket like so. That's going to get secured back here with a cable tie. They do supply one with the kit. Go ahead and put that on now. Okay. Now we can go ahead and put the lines in this mount back here. Like so, you can see that's nice and clean. Go ahead and trim that cable tie. And now we can raise the table up. Come back here. Like I want to rotate this fitting just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to rotate this fitting here just a bit. Hopefully we can get another use out of this tool. See, and that just drops right in there now. That's super sweet. Let's go ahead and grab a banjo and two new crush washers. So we've had the opportunity in this video to show you a couple of times what rotating that fitting looks like. Bracket we had to trim. Which one was that? Well, that was the bracket that goes right here, okay, from the factory. Remember, it's kind of like this, right? And it holds that junction block for the two brake lines back here. That block is gone. There's nothing else down here that needs to be held. So, heck, saw that bad boy off. Went over to the bench grinder, just rounded it off a little bit so it looks a little bit better. And now we are ready to install this. Spiegeler supplies some new uh, attachment points to secure this brake line here in the back. And we're going to go ahead and get this mocked up now. Okay, now let's try and get this all bolted together back here. You got a lot of stuff coming back together in this area, right? So there's gonna be some pressure on it. And you'll also note if you install the bolt without anything in there, you're gonna see that it all kind of comes together at this, the bolt goes in at a little bit of an angle, believe it or not, it's not perfectly straight. So 
Take your time here, don't cross thread. The brake line that goes to the rear caliper is the one that needs to be closest to the frame. Slide everything together like this. We've got our modified bracket that we already gave you guys a good look at. So kind of put everything together like a sandwich. Grab a T-handle, it's a five internal hex, and let's kind of get everything going. And it, the angle that this bolt goes in at, like I said, it's just a little, it's not quite straight. There it is. There's a lot of pressure there. You got these two brake lines happening. Bracket. Okay, so now let's take a second and let's try and get everything just adjusted up so that the lines are kind of even. bracket in there. All right, now we'll start to build from the back to the front with our ABS wheel speed sensor harness and the brake line. We're reusing OEM clips here. Got a couple back here. Like so. Now, if you remember that bracket that we took out, that needs to get put back in. Line up the grommet on the brake line with the grommet that's already on the ABS sensor. The brake line goes in first, then the ABS wheel speed sensor. Okay. Let's grab the fastener. T handle, you have to squeeze this back together while you put your fastener in there. pliers. Squeeze that together. Get your fastener through there. It's a four mil internal hex. Snug that up. Like so. T handle got caught. Okay. Got that out. This is all secondary. We're going to deal with this after the fact. I want to continue to focus on just the routing of the lines themselves. Make sure they're in spots where we really are happy. Got 
got one more clip down here for the wheel speed sensor. It's right here. So we need to come down here and slide that all together and then clip it in place over the grommet. There is a white stripe that's on the uh, wheel speed sensor harness. So I kind of try and line that up with. Slide the grommet up into position. Clip that into place. All right. Let's make sure we've got this tight. Good to go there. We can get these two banjo bolts. One back here at the caliper. Like so. Okay, now we can come over here and just finish securing everything, getting it as even as humanly possible. Just want to get these two lines here. There we go. All right, I like that final resting place. That all looks like it turned out good. And now we need to focus on rerouting all the wiring that goes through here. I preserved all the like this little clip here, you're able to get in there and with a screwdriver, hit the release tab, I was able to pull that apart. You could supplement a cable tie there if that's what you ended up having to do, not really a big deal. So first one that we want to route is going to be this harness here. This is going to be the exhaust gas sensor. That clips onto the bracket. Make sure you're a good positive clip. Go ahead and slide that in like so. Next up, so wheel speed sensor. up there. sure you have that positively engaged. And then we have our brake light switch, right? Obviously you're still gonna be running that, so let's get that plugged back in, like so. We have this little clip right here. Slide that back in. Thread 
it back through. Got to engage. It's pretty clean back here. We need one cable tie right here. I'm going to go grab that from the toolbox and we'll be right back. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Well, the home stretch minus that pile over there. Hope you guys get the sense this is a project. If you know you don't have experience working on bikes or your bike, this may be one for the shop. Let's go ahead and tighten up the banjo bolts up here at the top. A couple of passes, make sure we're good. And we are now ready to put some fluid in the rear reservoir and bleed the rear brakes. All right, look at that. Speed bleeder bag and hose kits installed. I got a fluid up in my reservoir. I got a 10 millimeter wrench in my hand. We're gonna bleed these brakes, baby. You know, you could start off with a little hydraulic, or I'm sorry, a little uh, gravity bleed. We're not gonna show all this on camera. You know, what I'm doing now is just pushing down and holding. When we come back, we're gonna have fluid moving. And we're gonna show you how to wrap this up. Okay, we've got fluid moving, and I'll tell you, it was a challenge. I'm not going to BS you. This is a really long run because it goes all the way from the master up to the ABS block, which quite clearly is at the front of the bike, and then from the ABS block back here to the rear caliper. So that's a lot. You can see there's still some, some air. We've been at this for a hot minute. but we're getting close. Okay, brakes are bled. That's a long run. You know, you've got your master up to your ABS assembly, back to your caliper. Using the manual method, it's gonna take you a hot minute to push fluid through that, just be patient. You know, you can also let it gravity bleed for a while to kind of get it moving, but I want you to know that's gonna take a hot second. If you have a power bleeder, I do have a power bleeder, that would make it 100% easier. Most people don't have that in their garage and you're gonna be left to your own devices. When I come back, we're gonna have the bike all back together and we're gonna close this out. Okay, there you have it. You know, hopefully, and you know, what we found over the years with these ABS models, and we've done several now, where we've done the Spiegler installs, we end up selling a lot of brake line kits for those bikes because these installs have, I think, been very beneficial for a lot of riders to get that kit done. That's the reason we do this. It's marketing, but it's also put out here as a resource to help you, number one, decide, should I tackle this project on my own, right? You're gonna see how involved this is. If you think this is over your head, take it into a licensed mechanic, let them go ahead and do it. If you think, you know what, I'm mechanically inclined, and if I follow these steps, I can get this done, by all means, use this as a resource to help you get through your project our end goal is to help you get the same result from your install that we got from ours. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm here to make sure you get your job done right the first time.